as Megan said, I'm uh, Zavia or Xavier Harrington. I work out of the English department here in the OR, um, well, at USI at the OR. Um, I teach primarily composition, literature, technical writing courses. Those are really um, sort of the foundation. But I also, as an undergrad, I was a double major in English and education, but I was very interested in things like gender studies and interdisciplinary studies. So I find myself, uh, I sort of found myself taking a lot, a lot of race relations courses, a lot of gender studies courses. And as a graduate student at Auburn University, I studied rhetor uh, rhetoric and composition as well as technical writing. And I found myself wanting to teach gender studies. So they gave me the opportunity to start teaching those classes instead of sort of taking those classes. So as the, uh, the professor of record, uh, for gender studies here, I find myself wanting my students to become introduced to the theories regarding gender studies. I don't want to bore them with the 20 page rhetoric. That's not sort of uh, my goal. My goal as their professor is to always be student centered and to make everything that we do um, accessible for them. So keeping in mind that this is a gender uh, 100 level course, I present them with the theories that you would normally see in an interdisciplinary studies course pertaining to gender from popular culture sources. So you're going to see a lot of YouTube videos, you're going to see a lot of articles from Bloomberg, from CNN, from Fox News. Those are the things that I use. I also use things like blog posts, um, uh, actual people that are discussing gender identity and gender stereotypes, those sorts of things. So you'll hear me use terminology like vlogs and blogs and YouTube posts and articles I consider those to be popular culture references that my students would understand. So I'm taking you from my Blackboard course uh, site over into something that I use very often, which is YouTube. You will see that I have tons of videos. Um, every semester I go in and clean this up and I delete the videos that have already been posted for students. My students are millennials. They know how to use YouTube and they like receiving video messages from me. So while some of you might uh, still prefer to use email, a lot of students prefer to hear and to see your face, which is why my instructional, uh, instructional designer, Alex, sort of kept telling me, keep going with that. Don't stop doing that because you want to start using something else. So I will continue to use YouTube as a weekly reminder of what students should be doing. I know a lot of instructors prefer to use uh, lectures for their courses. I think that I can sort of accomplish the same task by using weekly updates via YouTube. I can answer questions that I receive via email in this uh, format versus typing out something or providing lecture notes. And a lot of times I record these weekly updates um, two or three days before they're due. So if you can imagine receiving a, uh, an email every Sunday with a YouTube link from your professor that reminds you about what's going to be sort of coming up in the, week, uh, in the weeks that you'll see. So, You'll notice that I have videos here. Again, I clean these up uh, every semester. You see load more because there, there are more. <laughs> and um, I think that it helps to keep the lines of communication open. Once, once I notice that I'm receiving a lot of the same questions via email, I can add that to the end of my weekly update. And it's normally me holding up a question mark and saying, okay, let's get to your questions. Um, and then I start answering questions that I found that students just sort of constantly ask. Now I'll take you over to the course site that it is uh, still in construction, I guess. It's a construction zone. Uh, for me, I'm all about, again, usability. It might have a lot to do with uh, being the rhetorician and the technical writer, but I feel as though I fail my students if I do all of this work and they aren't able to use it. So my tools have been set up with the student in mind. And you'll notice in just a second when I point you to the actual content that the content has been set up with the students in mind as well. And as I go through, if you see something that you think I should point out or jot down as I continue sort of working in this construction zone, feel free to let me know at the end. I'll be happy to, to sort of take your suggestions. So on my uh, toolbar here, you'll see that I have a start here a menu or tab. And then I have weekly assignments follow, uh, followed by journaling via VoiceThread. Then I have email, which I will open up to students later on, but as, for, uh, as of right now, it's just open to me. I have my grades, which allows students to see that I uh, progressively sort of add grades. Uh, I don't wait until the end of the semester. As they submit assignments, I submit grades. It sort of allows students, again, to keep an open level, uh, open level of communication, excuse me, so that they know how they're progressing in our gender studies course. Professor info is here, and then online help. I'll quickly walk you through these steps. This is my start here page. Notice I have no home page. I've disabled that uh, via the use of my trusty 
uh, instructional designer. I have a uh, banner here that allows students to have my contact information as soon as they log in. If you scroll down, you'll see step one and in its introduction to the course. Again, a YouTube video. I wanted them to see my face and to know sort of uh, who's teaching whom. You know, a lot of students see me on campus and they think I'm a student. And I think that's a wonderful compliment, <laughs> but it's not, it's not necessarily true. So I do like to introduce myself to them and introduce them to the course. And it's really short blurb, um, but it does uh, sort of accomplish the purpose. Notice I'm attempting to help out those students that might not be well versed in technology yet by saying, hey, if you don't have what's necessary to view this, click on the link and just take it to your internet browser. We can talk about whatever software that you need later on. Step two takes them away from the introduction to the course and to the professor, into the syllabus and the calendar. I always do these as uh, separate entities because it makes more sense for me as a technical writer so that I'm not constantly coming in and changing this entire larger document just because of the calendar. I don't believe in uh, not providing students with the calendar. I have a little bit of OCD, just a little. So I like knowing what's happening every week, and I know that they do as well. Um, I give them a blurb that it's tentative. You know, as I know, students like to know that things can be changed. And of course, in my weekly updates that I told you about, I inform them of any changes. Step three takes them away from the introduction, away from the syllabus and the calendar, and now into joining the voice thread group. Remember, I use VoiceThread as my way of sort of uh, reiterating themes and ideas that they'll see throughout the week. So they need to join the VoiceThread group. A few notes on it. And on the very bottom, I have VoiceThread instructions. Um, again, my handy dandy friends in my cohort group and my instructional designer have been very helpful there. And I went through and added uh, screenshots and directions that will help students to sort of walk their way through VoiceThread. Again, this is a 100 level course. I teach all of my courses, not just 100 levels, with the assumption that my students know nothing so that I can give them more than enough. So instructions for joining VoiceThread, instructions for getting onto VoiceThread, instructions in terms of what course you're in. On the left-hand side, you'll see weekly assignments. This is where I upload per week what students need to do. Remember, they have a physical calendar in front of them. They have the electronic calendar if they need it, but this is just another way of reminding them in terms of what they need to be doing. Each week has a blurb that keeps them on task. Week one says, how do I become introduced to the course and to Professor Harrington, right? If I click, I am introduced to the course and to Professor Harrington. So what is gender is the introduction. Um, I remind them this is what you should be doing this week. And that weekly update that I told you about is right here. Um, I'll show you one in just a second. And then again, a reminder, if you can't view this, you can view it this way. I'll take you back to week two. How many genders are there really? And how do I learn the differences? Notice I'm walking students through the theories, through popular culture articles and YouTube videos, et cetera. If I click on week two, students are introduced to the weekly update. Remember, they receive this on the Sunday before week two starts. So they're, they're sort of knowing what I'm expecting for them before Monday even rolls around. If students scroll down, they'll come to the articles that I'm asking them to read for that week, right? And then we have our very first quiz, which pertains to terminology based on gender identities and then raising a gender neutral baby. On the very bottom, we have our very first journaling experience. Students really enjoy these. This is the opportunity that we have to communicate. I was talking to my cohort group at the very beginning when we were coming up with objectives and things that we were nervous about. And even though I went through this program um, last year, one of the big things that I was still nervous about was being able to sort of um, transfer the communication in the community that I worked so hard to build in the classroom to the online setting. And I get wonderful um, course reviews for my online classes in terms of usability, but I have not taught a class that required a lot of communication. I've been teaching composition and uh, technical writing, which for the most part is very um, reading intensive and very individualized. Students communicate with me um, during online office hours and emails, but they didn't necessarily have to communicate much with the entire group. But with gender studies, when you're talking about controversial topics, um, specifically with you know the Bruce Jenner 2020 interview, I expect tons of questions. <laughs> so I want them to have a community and a place to ask questions. I'll click um, the weekly update for you so that you can get an example. And then I will click the journal for you so that you can get another example if that's okay.
exciting sports. I hope you all are having a great start to your week. I'm coming to you to remind you about this week's weekly expectations and uh, the weekly assignments, so to speak. So let's jump in. This week, week two has begun five new things. So I hope that you taking week one to sort of introduce yourself to the course. I hope that you had already um, sort of reviewed the syllabus and the calendar and that you are ready to jump on it. So let's go. This week, you have two articles that you review. They have YouTube videos attached to them to sort of introduce you to the topic that the article contains. to. I always suggest that students watch the YouTube videos that are short first. Watch those videos first before you attempt to read the article. It will help you in your understanding. All right, so you can sort of hear me, if you if you could hear me, going through the weekly expectations. Watch the YouTube video and then read the popular culture articles that pertain to this week's theories. Then I'm reminding them about the quiz and about the journaling experience. I'll click this quickly and see if you can hear a little bit of it. Hi, you guys, and welcome to your first journaling assignment for the semester. I think you'll find that these journals are really a fun way to sort of get out of that. Um, sometimes a stranger, sometimes a family member, sometimes even a friend, a question that pertains to gender that maybe you've never thought of. Um, a lot of times in my physical classroom, students are just overwhelmed with the ways that their friends respond, with the ways that the family members respond, and even sometimes I will force them to sort of ask the stranger to be a class in another class um, that you might not talk too often. Sometimes I'll say, you ask someone that you've never spoken to this question and what now, my journaling experience is uh, being transferred almost exactly from my physical classroom in that I'm asking students to ask a question um, to a professor, staff, faculty, you know, that doesn't matter to me whether you know the person or don't know the person, but you're asking a gender-related question from whatever reading we had that week. And I always tell the students that you can allow the person to remain anonymous if you like, but you're re responding based on what this person sort of said back to you. So for example, if we're inside of week uh, two, and students are responding uh, in terms of gender and raising a gender neutral baby. The question here is how many genders are there? Um, and they're going to go and ask someone that question. So you can assume that I would have sort of asked my students in the physical classroom, hey, let's go into LA, let's go into engineering, let's go over here, find someone and ask them how many genders are there. And my students would have gone up to you, asked you the question and said, well, how many genders do you think um, there are and why would you define them this way? They would then write those things down. We would come back to class. We would discuss it. And sometimes you find that students are mm -hmm. upset that the people that they look to as authority figures sort of have biases mm -hmm. and issues with something as simple as gender or sexuality and things like that. And we get to have those conversations. Well, I don't want to say who I talk to, but this is somebody I really look up to. When I asked her the question, she sort of scoffed and she you know, felt as though it was beneath her. Um, and then we get to have conversations about, well, it's okay, not everyone has taken a gender studies course, not everyone sort of understands what that means, and not to sort of further judge someone who's judging another person, if that makes sense. So the same sorts of conversations happen on VoiceThread, and students will get to post back onto this question, right, and then students get to go in and then sort of piggyback off of what their classmates have said. In order to show you quickly how these are set up, I'll just show you again the blurbs that pertain to the weeks. Notice I have weeks one through four set up already. These weeks already have their blurbs. I just need to go in and edit the voice threads. <laughs> My final exam is already there. I just need to uh, change this. This is actually a gift and it moves uh, with Homer uh, ringing the bell saying the end is near. So students like to be reminded that finals are coming. <laughs> Um, again, journaling via VoiceThread. If you don't go through the VoiceThread video, you can go through the link that I've provided for you. And again, you can see all the videos I've done thus far. Um, if I take you back, once again, you'll see my grades. I do have that set up with the weighted grades. And then I have a little bit of information about myself. My contact information is provided for students. Again, remember this is on the banner uh, as soon as they enter Blackboard, but it's nice to have it again for students um, because we know they don't you know, read the syllabus, so I put it there again. And then about me, it's just, I mean, a quick autobiography of sorts. I have to talk about myself in the third person almost, but um, I try to make it as 
as ethical as possible without lying about myself. I wanted to say, oh, I'm related to Frederick Douglass. <laughs> W.B. Du Bois is like a great, great ancestor of mine. Um, I still have his pocket watch, but none of that's true. So I had to sort of tell the truth. And I think I did pretty, pretty well. Um, down here is online help. It takes students to the distance learning site. And I want to sort of send them uh, here. Uh, at some point in terms of like technological help or things of that nature, but I don't want to make them think that if they're at home, they can get technological help here at USI for a situation that's totally different. So I'm trying to figure out how to sort of word that so students aren't confused. If you're in the library and you feel as though you need assistance with something that's not working, then that's where you would go. But if you're at home and your, you know, AOL account just won't allow you to dial up, then that's a, another a issue altogether. I will take you back to my main page, and I will um, take any questions or suggestions or comments that you may have. Thank you guys for your time. So I would like to say I'm the director of gender studies. <laughs> um, you are. This is an excellent oh, layout. No pressure. No, amazing. I mean, what you're doing here, <clears throat> readability, just everything, and also the ideas. I love the simplicity. It makes sense with the class. Simple questions, but provocative questions that they can talk about, and the way you're having them get into it. And I remember we talked, and I said, we just want them to be thinking about these ideas. We're not looking for crazy high level. We're looking, let's introduce. I say bravo to you. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And I hope that a lot of our other gender studies classes can now use this as a model in the online. Right. Form. That's my hope. I think. Um, I, I love the fact that you see that because I, I always tell my students in the physical classroom, my job as your professor is not to sort of indoctrinate you with my opinions. That's not what I'm doing. It's already a gender studies course. So you signed up for it knowing a little bit in terms of the topic, but maybe your religion, your experiences, your, your parents, your friends have sort of made you um, nervous about this experience. My job is not to indoctrinate you and make you think or feel the way that I feel. Um, but I do, as your professor, have, have the job of introducing you to the facts. And what you take from those facts is entirely up to you. So I do like for them to read for themselves, but also to communicate with the group. Um, this semester, interestingly enough, I had a student who was genderqueer, and we had the most wonderful conversations. And when I would have a student that would say, the idea of being genderqueer to me is just disgusting. How could you be genderqueer? So you just sleep with everyone. We had to quickly sort of have a conversation. Gender is not sexuality. And um, I can't remember uh, who all I've sort of told this to. I've been bragging all weekend. Um, after the Bruce Jenner 2020 interview came out, I received 32 emails from my gender study students about the interview and questions. And how could Diane Sawyer, you know, be so negative? How could she be so ignorant? Why was she asking those types of questions about his sexuality and what kind of clothes he was going to wear? And those aren't the kind of questions that you get at the very beginning because they don't even know what gender means. You've taken um, them out of their bubble where I they tried. would ask those questions, and now you've had them think critically, and now they can see that those questions are loaded. I, yes, I try. So I was really... Um, I'm not an emotional person, if you know anything about me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't cry. But I was really um, touched that they felt connected enough to a topic that none of them are majoring in, so to speak, that they would watch it and then ask questions to me via email, um, you know, during the weekend when they're off. And I want to say I would definitely take this class. Okay. So, Davia, do you have any areas you're kind of not sure which one will be better to do mm -hmm. that you can answer audience? Yes. Um, I think I touched on both of them. My first question I've been posing to my group and to um, my instructional designer, Alex, um, sort of the entire program has been, should I use YouTube or should I use VoiceThread or should I mix the two? I personally, and not to persuade you, I personally think it's smart to allow students to see your face at least once in an online course because it does build a sense of community. So that's why I like for the introduction to be a YouTube video. And as you saw, I do updates with my face frequently. Um, but I'm not sure if it f is forcing students to have to use too many modes. I think embedding it might be helpful, but I'm not sure. So your suggestions are great. I, you and I have talked, right? No, we haven't talked. Um, and I think... For me, I would just probably use VoiceThread, but I would only use VoiceThread because I don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> um, but I, that's just me personally. Um, but I think because you're not asking them to use two different 
there are three different modes that they are not familiar with, right? They've got Blackboard, which they use all the time. They've got YouTube, which let's face it, we're all on all the time. They're millennials. People talk before YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so voice may be the only thing they have to learn, and that's quick and easy. So I don't. I don't think it's problematic. It's not like you're asking them to all of a sudden figure out how to use VoiceThread and Panopto. And, you know, YouTube is something that they you probably know better than other things. So okay. I don't think it's Microfiche, YouTube, right. Here, go use micro cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you have something. I am a whole thing. Don't you? You're not. And what I was curious about is um, when you do that, is there a way to link it to just your course or are you? Live to the world. You're making it public, but if that um, sort of makes you nervous, the what you can do is you can send your link to your um, particular video, your particular channel to your students. And you have to think, when you make it public, only people that are searching for your title will come upon your video. So if the title is Hot Sexy Professor, <laughs> everyone's going to see that versus, <laughs> versus Hot Sexy Professor with lecture notes number one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the title helps, but making it public helps, but then I always disable comments because one time long ago when I was teaching at Auburn, I started doing YouTube videos for my DE courses, and I forgot to disable the comments, and I was being hit on. And I was like, I don't necessarily want that. But... I mean, the grammar was terrible, so we would have never dated anyway. <laughs> but that's not sort of the place you want to sort of pick up a, a bow, right? Mm -hmm. So you disable comments. You can sort of block um, your features and things like that. And it, it, it's not really that difficult. I know Alex was going to say more. You can, uh, you can put things on YouTube that's unlisted. Mm -hmm. It'll make them, like, people can see the link. We have a link that goes to it, but it won't appear in searches. So that's, okay, that's, that's something. Yeah. So you know, in nursing, we're always thinking about the confidentiality thing. That's a big issue. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. we try to, like with voice thread, make sure they're always linked just to that course. Exactly. Yes. And you can do that with YouTube. It, okay. it, like I said, it only takes a little bit of doing. Once you make the video, it's literally clicking buttons. But remember, anything that I do in terms of this class belongs to USI anyway. So it's not necessarily, you know, Xavier's, right. you know, Professor H's, it's USI's. And as long as you're sort of doing your job and providing the information to the students, I think VoiceThread or YouTube would be a great way to do it. Because you have those extra HIPAA concerns, mm -hmm. you, should, you should probably talk to like Mike. Or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just that. But uh, you, know, you never know. You might as well ask. So, yeah. Yeah. so for the idea of a welcome video or something, just to try something, that's probably. Yeah, we're not talking about case stuff. Right. Right. Right.